Welcome to a final episode before Thanksgiving. Maybe we might have a bonus one next week, but we do know it's been been about a month since we've been here giving you guys the news. Whether it's two stories that Eric brings, two stories that I bring, we collaborate and we talk about it based on the actual article and not the headline. I'll start. We work is filed for bankruptcy. So that is where dun, this dun, dun. this office is. They've been talking <laughs> about it for a while. There's been a couple of, um, say, premonitions that this would happen. So they finally sent it out. We got a letter from the WeWork CEO saying that really? everything is good and that mm. the w- what they're essentially going to do, obviously, consolidate their finances including the buildings in New York City, which I don't know how many are in New York City, but I'll just go over it real quick. So SoftBank, which also invested in Compass, and they valued it at around $47 billion. Wow. (laughs) It's beat $47 billion. As of last week, it was $45 million. So I think the market has spoken. The company said late Monday that the investors holding 92% of the company's secured debt have agreed to adjust the terms of their loans to help the company remain in business. The only thing I'll say to that before I turn it over to my handsome colleague is that I think they will stay in business, but it will be very challenging to decide which buildings are um, suitable to remain open. I, I, they expanded way too quick, and that's all I have to say. What, what, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I think they'll still be around. It's a interesting business model. They obviously grew too fast, too quick, and you know now they're figuring out the next path forward. Yeah, and the only I think th- people knew that WeWork was going to go bankrupt back when they were getting a valuation of forty-seven billion. So yeah, I think the only person who didn't know that was SoftBank. Yeah, even was... the CEO probably knew, the founder. So uh, it was just a little wild, but it does offer a service. There are people who use it. Uh, you know, it's time to, I guess, renegotiate. Yeah, and the only thing I, I, would, I would say with this, I brought it up before, is first of all, our building, which is near Times Square, is packed. So they're probably above 90% occupancy at all times. So they have no problems. It's the ones that are kind of on the outskirts of the city or say Austin or San Francisco or whatever that are gonna be struggling, closed down, consolidated. And this is an interesting thing. I brought it up before is that I worked out with someone that knew the owner of the building. And they said that when they negotiated the terms of the lease, they said at the lowest point would be 70% occupancy. COVID hits, it went way down. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the buildings went to 50% occupancy, and that's when all the money just started draining out, and now here we are. Yeah, well, article, here we are. None but two. Luxury, Central Park, Billionaire's Row, and Hudson Yards have weak sales, which grabbed my attention because of the headline uh, that a lot of these expensive units have not sold on Central Park, especially like the super, super high end. I mean, they're talking $250 million apartments yeah. uh, that are now doing price reductions. Uh, you know, the penthouses, some of the, you know, trophy units. And, you know, that's kind of the, they were talking about specific units and specific buildings. Uh, But the reason that that grabbed my attention was because we've heard how successful luxury has been over, you know, recent years. So, or this past year. So, you know. Where was that luxury, though? Luxury was in, you know. It was like West Chelsea. Yeah, I would say that there are some neighborhood specific. You know, there has been, uh, it has to be a unique apartment. Yeah. So Hudson Yards and Central Park have a lot of inventory that is very similar. So I guess that's where they're not getting enough demand for those. It's also, yeah, it's it's also once you have one building that competes with another building, that competes with another building, that competes, these are high rises. Okay, it has changed, this has transformed the New York City. This isn't like a 26 story in West Chelsea where they're not going above 26 stories, 30 stories. This is gigantic towers. 
So it's it's inevitable. A lot of inventory. Yeah, a lot of it'll inventory. be, and there's just not enough people that would soak that up domestically, internationally, maybe, but not right now. It'll be very interesting what happens with that. Moving on to story number three, talking about uh, acquisitions, is that Zillow, they have been on a tear. They picked up Showtime, which was a way to schedule your showings in right with the listing agent without the buyer's agent. And now they just acquired a CRM, which is a way to have your database uh, you know, organized, is they, they picked up a, pl- a very popular follow-up boss CRM for $400 million of initial cash wow. and potentially $100 million more. A, a half a billion dollar acquisition in this market for a CRM. That's impressive. That's insane. Yeah. Initial cash of $400 million. It just shows, and I'm getting the chills thinking about it, what they said five to six years ago. Their, their CEO at the time, I think it, they changed uh, CEOs, but at the time they said they wanted to be the one stop. You see the home, we also have insurance, we have our own agents, we have our own bank, we have our own attorneys, we have, you just come to us. And that in the whole, you schedule it through us, you buy it through us, we have our attorneys, and you sell, it's just, they've been saying that for years. NAR, you know, uh, that's pretty They incredible. haven't done anything, so. That's incredible. The, it'll be uh, interesting. They must see a lot of value in that. I've never even heard of this thing. Yeah, and the last thing I'll say to this is that, thank God we live in New York City, okay? Follow Boss is not disrupting New York City. Zillow is not disrupting New York City. It's, I mean, if it's a helpful tool, good. Yeah. I would, I'm interested to figure out more That's about nice it. Payout. People from these states are buying the most real estate in New York. Wow. Okay. California and that's, Florida. The, that's two and three. Wow. Okay. Yep. So who's number one? Yeah. Guess away. I'm going to say Tri-State. That's very smart. Is it Jersey? That's New Jersey. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. New Jersey isn't for, uh, Connecticut isn't far behind, but New Jersey was number one. So, of course. New Jersey's that, buying in New York. And you know what? When wow. I read that, I said, you know, I've been meeting a lot of buyers from New Jersey. Yeah. They always are late because they're, <laughs> they're coming They've got to go through the tunnel. They, they yeah. overestimate the, or they underestimate the amount of time that it takes to come into the, the bus city. They, or they, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the train. Yeah. yeah. So, it's, uh, it could get across town. You're like, oh, the tunnel. The tunnel is so much yeah. traffic. Which, at the same time, then they're like, wow, I really need this place in New York City, so I never have to deal with this again. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. What, so, what are the reasonings for New Jersey? Because I could see California, there's a lot of people from California coming back to New York. They initially went out there, and they're coming back. Same with Florida. I would say yes. that it is uh, people who got a home during COVID, and now they need to buy one again. Yep. Uh, so, it's like second homes. Investments. Yep. Second homes, people are being Buying called back into the office. They see the value. You yep. know, it's uh, they're close by. So it's also good. For, you know, I feel like we do find a lot of investors from New Jersey as well, but they are really sticklers on the number. You oh, know, yeah. because same with Connecticut. It's like they want to. Uh, they've they're local. You know, yep. they've never seen an opportunity like this to get into New York City real estate and be an investor, and they're like, wow. This is my chance. So, yep. yeah, I, I, you know, we talk about say luxury, but that medium to low price point. You know, we I just got off the phone with someone that uh, he was looking for a four million dollar place in Soho. It sold in twenty days. You don't hear that. So if it's priced right, you know, and it's not this twenty million, thirty million dollar property, there's buyers out there. You know, they, they want that upgrade. They want that bigger place. They maybe saved for the last five, six years, and now they're ready to jump. So uh, welcome back, what yeah. do you want to say? No, that's great. I uh, think those are a couple good articles. We didn't even have to bring up the negative stuff going on with the brokerage businesses. Not at all. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> exactly. Well, well, let's do another one next week. Absolutely. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And down in the description, you can find how to contact us. If you are looking to relocate to New York City, we would love to help you. Answer any questions you have. Have a great day, and we will see you next week.